Olympian, which is like blowing my mind. And that by itself is incredible. But all you have to do is look to your backstory and realize just how incredible this journey is. Do you just sit with it sometimes and go like, hold on a second, look where I am today. Yeah, I mean, you know, this has been a 15 year journey and, uh, you know, a lot of athletes have gone through similar things and it's a huge dream come true to actually be able to say that I'm an Olympian now and actually go to Tokyo. So the whole journey has been extraordinary and I'm really happy where I'm sitting right now. It may be an Olympic story, but it's more a story to me of the love of a father and the love of a son, which Jerry brings me to you. Did you ever think you would see this moment where you're about to send your son off to the Olympic Games? I can't even start talking about this kid without getting teary-eyed. It's been 21 years almost. Um, I always knew there was something special about Jordan and everybody within the diving community had said all along, uh, Tim O'Brien, who is the son of Greg Luganis' Olympic coach, Dr. Ron O'Brien, is the person who identified Jordan um, from one day at a summer camp. He saw Jordan jump off a diving board. And the next day he pulled me in and said, is, is this little boy your son? And I said, yeah, he is. And he said, you need to get him into diving. And he showed me some things about his body. And he said, I promise you, he reminds me of Greg Luganis. And I called him little Luganis today. And he said, if you put him in diving, he'll be a national champion one day and he'll likely be an Olympian. And Jordan was seven years old and 45 pounds. And so Tim saw something in him. And I always knew that there was something amazing about this child of mine, but for it to, to become a reality now and for him to attain a goal that he has worked so tirelessly for is just amazing to me. And I can't help but thinking about you, Jerry, years and years ago, having a dream of having a child, but that seemed out of reach. That seemed an impossibility. Why did it feel like that to you back then? I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a dad. The one thing I had wanted above all other uh, was to, to, to have a family of my own. But I also knew that at that time, it was almost impossible to have a family um, because though I wasn't out of the closet at the time, I knew that I was gay. And everything that I was ever told was, you can't have children, you won't have a family. And we knew from just watching you know, the news and news stories and, and, and what people were saying on TV that you know, gay people will never be able to uh, adopt a child. And so it would, it would just, it really killed me. And I tried very hard to adopt in the United States and it was, it was almost impossible. And when I discovered that I could adopt as a single man from Cambodia, um, it allowed me to, to at least start the process of realizing a dream that I had. Yeah, I know the kind of dream, it's like you can't sleep because you, you, that's the only thing you're thinking about. Jordan, you were so little, so tiny. Um, found yourself in a basket one day. Um, what do you remember about being a little boy? Because you were, an, you were orphaned, you were by yourself, you were not in good health. Describe what you were told about yourself or what you remember. I remember when, you know, coming into America, I had to get uh, five shots into each leg. And it was, it was actually horrible because I was really young at the time, but, you know, it was my dad, a doctor, and it, you know, it was, it wasn't the best moment of my life, but I also remember, you know, just being with my dad and singing and, you know, Thanksgiving and stuff like that. And he'd show me videos from the past and then it'd bring back all those memories and stuff. It was actually really cool. But, you know, being so young, I, I haven't had a lot of uh, sure. thought about, you know, what all happened in my past. Well, it is, it's a past that is heavy for a, for a little boy to carry, Jerry. Tell me about what you knew about uh, Jordan's health and how he was when when your adoption time came around. I knew that you know what I knew at the time was I got a certificate of good health from the agency, but when I when I was finally able to go to Cambodia, it took about five months to process. And when I went to Cambodia, um, and the nannies handed the baby to me, I mean he was two years old, but he was sixteen pounds. Hmm. and he had a really horrible scalp infection such that um, the lymph nodes behind his ears were so inflamed hmm. that the nannies thought he had boils. And the only thing they knew to do was to take a piece of metal and they cut each of, behind each of his ears. So to this day, he has scars behind each of his ears um, because they thought he had boils. 
he had intestinal parasites. I work in healthcare. I've never seen a case of intestinal parasites the way that he had them. And because of that, he was incredibly malnourished. And he had a, uh, a urinary tract infection that the uh, Western doctor assumed he probably had the entire time he was mm. at the orphanage, which was almost a year. Um, and it took uh, four days of antibiotics to clear that infection. And yet he suffered that infection that was so painful you know, I, I promised him that I promised him that I would do everything that I could, that he wouldn't ever have to suffer again, hmm. you know, that he would be healthy, that I would make every sacrifice I could as a parent to give him every opportunity to know what life was. And he was one of hundreds of orphans in this mm -hmm. orphanage and every one of them would reach up when I took him and they were like, me too, hmm. me too. They knew how to say me too. And they asked every family that came in to adopt, they would say me too. And they mm -hmm. called you pal, which means like uncle. Mm -hmm. And it was heart wrenching. And mm -hmm. I knew at that moment that, that I wanted to do something. Jordan gave me a gift so much greater than I could have ever given him because I have seen through him one human being's impact on so many people around the world. And I knew that the promise that I made to him would, would serve well. And I hope that I have served him well mm -hmm. as a dad. Well, I, I'm your living proof. He's sitting right there and it's so obvious you have. And I think as an adoptive parent, you, people sometimes will say, well, look, you saved him, you saved him. But I think you and I both know, Jerry, who saved whom? It does. Absolutely. Yeah, I know by nomenclature, you know, adopted parent or adoptive son. But at the end of the day, you know, regardless of the genetic makeup of our bodies, he is my son mm -hmm. and nothing yeah. will change that. He is my son. Yeah, the labels are weird um, and unnecessary. Jordan, I was thinking about trying to be in your shoes for a minute. Here you are. You come to a new country. You um, have your dad with you who loves you and is filling you with all of this goodness, but yet there are so many things that are different to the outside world. You don't have a mother, you have a father. Your father is gay, you're not the same color. How did you navigate that stuff, Jordan? At a very young age, um, you know, I didn't really realize how much of a difference I was than I, you know, with my dad. Um, being with him was, it's normal for me and the love I have for him and what he has for me is it doesn't change. You know, it's, it's equally as much as any other parent or child would have for each other. But, you know, it started to get um, a little more tough for me when kids at school would ask me why I was a different color or why my dad doesn't have a wife or why I don't have a mom, um, where I came from. What did you say, Jordan, when they said, where's your mom? I didn't have an answer. Uh, hmm. I was I was so young that it you know it just came at me so hard that I I couldn't say anything back. I did talk to my dad about it, um, and you know obviously he had to explain it to me. But even after you know explaining to me and you know over time he told me that you know we could try to see you know if we can find your original parents. But even to this day that you know that doesn't matter to me. I, hmm. He's always been with me and he sacrificed so much. Wow, that's interesting that you don't, you're not interested in finding them. Do you feel like a piece is missing or you don't have that feeling? I've never <laughs> thought I was, uh, I was missing anything. You know, I've, I've always been so happy with, with my dad. And, um, you know, he's always been by my side. He's so supportive mm. and he loves every human being there is. Um, and, <laughs> you know, that, that's helped me grow into a good person in general. And, um, you know, we'll keep rolling at it. It has been a long year yeah where it's been anything but normal well now there's hope the covid vaccines i know i know it's been a little confusing like really confusing so it's more important than ever to make a plan visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine what are you waiting for roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine plan your vaccine plan your vaccine I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the rebels, 
There is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. Well, Jerry, you wear your heart outside. I can see it as plain as day. It's sitting right there on, on, the, on the outside of your shirt. Yet, trying to protect your son from kids at school, from bullies at school, from things that come up is not easy. How did you explain to him or how did you try to give him strength so that he could go back to school the next day? Yeah, so this, it started Hoda when he was in kindergarten. And now you gotta remember that Jordan literally slept on my chest for the first nine months that he was with me. And he wanted me to carry him all over the place. And I loved holding him. <laughs> and uh, I mean, our skin was next to each other. So he could mm -hmm. physically see that he was brown and I wasn't. It wasn't until a kid at school said, why are you brown and your dad's white? And he came home and he was crying. And I've always, he's always known his adoption story, but I wanted it, him to be able to come to me to, when he wanted questions. And part of my uh, parenting was to never, to never not be transparent with him. Mm -hmm. So when he, the only thing I could think of when he said, daddy, oh, why am I brown and you're white? I want to be white like you. And he was crying. And he mm -hmm. said uh, that the kid said brown was ugly. And I said, honey, the do you know how much money white people like me spend in tanning beds trying to get brown like you? We spend our whole lives laying out of pools and risking skin cancer just to become like you. And he's like, really? And I said, yeah. And then he talked about my eyes are blue and he wanted blue eyes. And, you know, I shared with him, I said, go look in the mirror. And I said, if you look in the mirror and you look really closely, I bet you can see your mom's eyes looking back at you. From what we know, um, they both passed and, and my mom and dad had both passed as well. And, and I told him that, you know, our parents are up in heaven looking out for us. I always told him that anytime he wants to try to locate, I will do everything in my power to locate any, any living relatives, including his biologic parents. Because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, yep. and know, he's a U.S. citizen, but he's a child of Cambodia. Jordan, you feel a real connection to Cambodia. I do. Yeah. And I did end up visiting and it was amazing to go back and see all these amazing people. So it was a great experience for me. What was it like, Jordan, to see people who looked like you when you looked at them, you saw yourself? OK, well, to be honest, when I got there, I thought I was going to be the same height as all of them, but I wasn't. I was still the shortest. <laughs> same as here. Um, so that was kind of sad. But, you know, seeing all these people and for me realizing what I have and uh, for what they don't have, uh, it, it made me really want to be able to make a change in the future. And I think, you know, I've been telling myself, and this is what's been motivating me to uh, succeed in diving is that, you know, once I can reach certain goals and the Olympics was one of the biggest goals that I could do for myself. And I can hopefully make, you know, a movement that can start a program in Cambodia so that orphans or any, you know, anyone that needs an opportunity can have it. And that's exactly what my dad gave me was an opportunity. And mm -hmm. that's, that's just what, you know, everyone needs that first step to start pushing uh, to reach their dreams. And it, uh, it ended up working out for me. I can only imagine that when you go back and you see a kid who doesn't have things, doesn't have the clothes or the shoes, does it hit you super hard? We were walking around um, Cambodia, just looking at the sites and stuff. And I, you know, I wasn't paying too much attention at the time, but I saw just a bunch of kids, you know, bare naked, walking around, running around and playing. And it, uh, um, you know, it, oh gosh, sorry. It's okay, honey. Now you got me. Mm. Um, shoot, sorry. It, um, it hurts just cause I can't do anything. <laughs> um, and I want to, but you know, where, where I sit right now, I, um, I just don't have the power. So, you know, that's, that's where, um, you know, reaching the Olympic goal, you know, and moving forward, 
and hopefully making my name into something that can mean something <laughs> um, will then help others in the future. So. Um, your name already means something, just, just FYI. Um, and I think you're right, you being at the Olympic Games is going to put you on a platform that little kids can look at and say, if he can do it, I can do it. I think it's beautiful what you said. And it's also apparent how you were raised in this moment, by the way. It's apparent what your dad taught you about life and, and caring about people. I think that's totally beautiful. What's it like to watch your 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 beautiful son show his heart like that, Jer? You know, I I um, <clears throat> gosh, he he inspires me yeah. every single day. I think his spirit is so ancient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when we were in Cambodia, you know, the majority of the people in Cambodia are Buddhist, and they believe with every fiber of their being that Jordan is a light that will help guide the children of Cambodia out of the mm. darkness from the time of the Khmer Rouge and the Vietnam War, because the pain of that genocide is still attached to almost every citizen in Cambodia. They touch Jordan, and then they touch themselves because they mm. feel that he is a blessed child, and they want that blessing. They named him as, an, as a baby Pisai, his Cambodian name, and it's his middle name. And it means little darling. I used to tell him the story of the Prince of Cambodia. And I, he has become the, the people's Prince of Cambodia. <laughs> and the fact that he is so connected with mm -hmm. a birth country that he hadn't really been a part of. Yeah. Tells That's me tough. something about the human condition. And it tells me uh, that that humanity is real. The things that I believe is real. If you <laughs> if you look at it, and I am just so incredibly proud of him, and the fact that as a 22 year old, you know, he's already looking. What can I do yeah. to make the lives of children who have nothing just a little bit better, just a little bit of hope? And it's just amazing, Hope. It's just it's oh. it's amazing for me. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. When you all you talked about the book about the Prince of Cambodia and you guys you got sick of that story Jordan because you know every kid gets sick of the same story <laughs> and and then you all started started kind of creating your own kind of bedtime stories that blossomed into a book so tell me how that happened I could never fall asleep ever unless my dad was with me when I was younger and it was either he sang me the drummer boy or he told me a bedtime story and you know he told me about the Prince of Cambodia and about the adventures that he'd go on. And he'd obviously base it off me because I got enjoyment from it. I got tired of the same story and I wanted something different. So he said, why don't we just go back and forth and make our own story together? And so we did. 
and I ended up passing out because I was exhausted. <laughs> um, but you know, he he saw something in that story that we told together and ended up writing it down instantly. Uh, and from that moment on, we wrote a book together, and here we are today. How has that book touched people, Jerry? It's really amazing because I wrote it more for him to have something to share with his children. You know, when we wrote it all out, so I got up out of his bed that night mm -hmm. and I really did say, holy cow, I think we just wrote a children's book. And so I wrote out this story of, of Rodney the rooster finding an orphaned egg that turned out to be a brown duckling. And the duckling went through the things that Jordan had gone through and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, the, not only does it lend itself now to single parent families, um, but it also lends itself to folks of different ethnicities. I believe in one human race, so I don't really talk about races so much as I, I one human race, but different ethnic backgrounds and different experiences. But, you know, having a, a white rooster with a brown duckling child and, and the things that won't, it's touched so many people's lives. And we've gotten requests from um, a lot of places that wanted to read. They didn't have, you know, a story that they could tell mm -hmm. their children. And that made it just, it made it really neat. It was never intended to be um, a best-selling children's book or anything like that. It was just for Jordan, but it, it really has, has taken off and it makes, it, it's like paying it forward to me a little yeah. bit. But uh, if we could do something like that, it's, it's super special. When you think about the fact that more than 20 years ago, you went to Cambodia and adopted this beautiful child and all the people along the way who told you it was impossible, people in this country who said you cannot adopt, people who threw roadblocks in front of you. And here you are with a child who's grown into a wonderful man who's about to be at the Olympic Games. Is there anything that you would say to the naysayers who tried to kind of stand in your way? Yeah, I think it's a really good lesson about social norms. And when we put a lot of information out there, it becomes what people believe to be true. And so, you know, everybody put out that that gay or lesbian parents would raise children that would have psychological problems or they would not be well balanced, et cetera. They wouldn't be successful in life. And so people believe that to be true. And I think as more and more members of the LGBTQ plus community started uh, building families of their own. And, you know, Jordan is not the only child that has been successful. It doesn't matter what our gender identity is or our sexual orientation. If you give a child an opportunity and you love unconditionally and you give your heart, that's the mission of a parent. If you decide to be a parent, you are giving of yourself. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not a toy or something to be put on the, on the shelf and, and taken down when you want to, you know, have a, a play date or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, your dad has told me everything about you and what you mean to him. What does he mean to you? I mean, there aren't really enough words to describe what he means to me. We've traveled so many states just so that I can have the opportunity to dive uh, with the best coaches and the best facilities. He put me into online school so that I could travel around the world and compete, you know, with amazing athletes. Um, and he sacrificed just so much and he's done everything for me and having him at the Olympic trials, you know, before every dive, seeing him to my left, you know, in the stands, it, it just meant so much. And I can feel how much he supports me and he loves me. And I was able to uh, perform the best that I could for him. Well, I know he won't physically be there with you in Tokyo, but he'll be with you in spirit. He'll be with you on Zoom. He'll probably be there <laughs> constantly. But I just want to let you know, we, we are cheering you on. Jordan, you are a remarkable human being. And Jerry, I can see exactly why he is. So thank you. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the rebels, 
There is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. This summer, another Olympic sized morning. The world meets again, and each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it, you did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. We are about to surprise Melinda Spate from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. She turns 53. Oh, Tuesday. Melinda. Well, Melinda's husband, William, asked for our help. He wanted to give her a good old birthday wish. So last year, they planned to celebrate Melinda's birthday on the plaza. Well, that didn't happen, but we're going to try to make it up for them. So we're going to give William a call. Look at their Halloween oh, costumes. How cute so are they? Cute. I heard one time William changed the channel, and Melinda got really mad at him. <laughs> William? Good okay. morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Okay, so we're ready. Can you take us to your lovely bride? Sure can. Oh, so boy. Exciting. We can't wait to Don't surprise die. her. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Babe, yeah. I need you to get this call. Hold on, Jeff. Okay. Uh, hey! you a happy birthday. <laughs> We're sorry you couldn't come yeah. see us. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> okay, wait, I know we, we, you're on TV. Is that okay if we record you? Yes, ma'am. Well, your husband is super cool. Uh, he, he said that you guys were trying to come here to visit us on the plaza. And we're sorry you couldn't come, so we're trying to give you our next best thing. We want to say we love you and happy early birthday. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Mel okay, you're our, you're our favorite fan of the week we maybe have ever had. Do you want to play a little game of trivia with us and see if we can get you a birthday present? Okay. Okay, here we go. So all week long, Melinda, we've been debating something really yucky. Should women wear underwear underneath what item of clothing? Did your hubby tell us how much you love watching our show, but he also let us know that one of your favorite hobbies is crocheting and crafting. So we are sending you an $1,000 gift card to Joanne for all of your crafting needs. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, and, oh my God. and just one more thing, Melinda. We know that your family's everything, so we knew that you're going to have to celebrate with them. So. Maya, Dante, your baby grandson, Ivan, come on in. They got some oh birthday God, treats yeah. for you. Are they there? Let me see. There they are. Oh, you got a lot of love in your family. What a beautiful. Oh, look at that baby. Look at Ivan. What a beautiful oh, baby. What a beautiful family, y'all. Thank you for sharing your early birthday with us. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? Right. The unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. My buddy Cal cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit <laughs> now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Okay. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I yes. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day.
Good morning, everybody. We have turned our plaza into Olympic Plaza, and why not? Take a look at this, a fully vaccinated and fully fired up crowd. This is gonna be the center of the action because a lot of the athletes returning home are gonna stop here first. We've got swimming royalty right here. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today All Day and a look behind the scenes of today's special Olympic broadcast. I'm back from Tokyo. We're on our Olympic Plaza just outside Studio 1A in New York City. Our crowd is already starting to pour in to Olympic Plaza, our fully vaccinated crowd. They're all looking good because they're fully vaccinated. Over the next half hour, I'm going to give you an inside look at how these special broadcasts have come together outdoors on our Olympic Plaza. Now, you think the, the party has been in Japan for the past two weeks, but every day we've invited these nice people, nice people, we like you. They've been cheering us on and cheering on Team USA. Here's an inside look at how our team here in the Big Apple turned this plaza into our own Olympic village. He's gonna win gold up there in lane five. He did it! While the adrenaline is still rushing through Tokyo, Today's Olympic Plaza may be just as exciting. 13 time zones and 7,000 miles away. We have all the action, athletes, and me, back here in New York. We love you, Al. <laughs> During our outdoor broadcast on our Today Plaza. The set took two weeks to design, another two weeks to build, with crews working throughout the night. This iconic arch, inspired by Chidori, Japanese architecture, all with the goal, welcoming fans to the plaza. The design ties into all of our sets that are over in Tokyo and Connecticut, um, really tying everything together for the viewer. Our fully vaccinated fans arriving at the crack of dawn, ready to be part Tucson, Arizona of the Today Show. And for this couple, our plaza is really the next best thing to being there. Caleb's going to be here today. Charles and Susie spent two years planning to go to the games, but then the pandemic. We have everything. We have airline ticket, hotel. I want to say thank you on behalf of the show and NBC for writing to us, for setting your alarm early, for bringing your vaccination cards, your photo ID, your great posters, your beads, like we are your Statue of Liberty foam hats. Our Plaza producer, Kevin Chattel, is the first to meet everybody. We're excited to be here. I have always wanted to do this since I was um, a little girl. And so now I'm 40 and we're here. <laughs> the fans arrive on 48th Street right here in Rockefeller Center at 6 a.m. They come decked out. People line up as early as 5.30. They come on, go through security, get a good spot, and right away we start getting them on TV. Dallas, are you ready? Yes. yes. Yeah. Right at the camera, you know your lines. We record all of that before the show starts that we include in our 8 o'clock open a bit later in the show. Greenville, South Carolina. Tampa, Tampa Florida. Florida. Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. This right here is the happiest place in New York City. People are out here to celebrate, to have a good time, honor their milestones. We got the gold. The we got the gold, yeah. <laughs> Every single day is a dose of joy, of excitement. There's never a dull moment. Our anchors get ready, then it's showtime. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. I'm Zach Schiffman, and I'm one of the stage managers on the Today Show. During our broadcast, stage manager Zach keeping the talent on track and the guests in place, all with multiple people talking in his ear. I'm in constant communication with the director and the assistant director. Under a minute, come on over. So I get in around 5 in the morning, and the first thing we do is we call into the daily rundown meeting where we learn about what's on the show today, what changes have happened overnight, and then we start our pre-planning process. 15 seconds. The best part about my job is that every day is different here. USA! USA! And just like that, from pool to plaza, Caleb Dressel wowing the crowd with his five gold medals. It is pretty crazy, though. Like, I've grown up seeing this on the TV yeah, too. and so to be on the other side and like all these fans out here are, are incredible. And that's a wrap for today behind the scenes on Olympic Plaza. And we're now
now joined by my pal Chanel Hello, Jones. How Good are to you? see you. So you bit you and, and Jenna Jenna Bush Hager last week yes. were holding down the fort yes. here while we were all in Tokyo. What was it like here on the Plaza? Yeah, that's a good question. I have to tell you honestly. It exceeded expectations. We didn't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. It was honestly the first time we've really been out with a crowd again. Right. And what we found, people are longing to be back together again and to connect. And I was fascinated by the amount of people from all over the country, from Utah to Des Moines to Florida. I mean, everybody was here having a good time. We mm -hmm. had the we had the games on behind us. Right. I mean, it was just it was electric on the big board. So yeah. so far for you, what's been your favorite moment of the Olympics? Oh my gosh, Kay having Caleb Dressel was that just a couple of days ago? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Olympic swimmer here on the set. And honestly, just the fun we've had with the crowd. Right. Jenna and I have played wacky games. There are a lot of things that you guys don't see at home behind the scenes during the commercial breaks, taking selfies and talking to folks. It's just been really fun. And, and of course, we've got the uh, U.S. gymnasts coming in today, the big. women's gymna yeah. gymnastics team. Even I'm a little are, are you, are I'm excited. You, is, is that who you're looking forward to here on Everybody the Everybody wants to see Simone and Suni Lee and all of these girls. I mean, they really, they were able to meet the moment. So we yeah. want to salute them. Absolutely. Now, in our last behind-the-scenes special, uh, we all answered the question, if we had a team sport, Olympic sport, what would it be? Okay, so uh, it's I nine. said eating, you crank, say? talking. Savannah said walking. Hoda said beer pong. Uh, what would your Olympic sport be? I want to learn how to surf. Really? Yes. I've never tried it. I've never even touched a board. But wow. I want to learn how. Uh, well, I, Can I, we this, make that happen? I, I'm going to make this happen. No, I'm I mean, I, is, I really want to no, learn. No, let's do it. But I don't have... I have no concept. I've never skateboarded. Like, I have uh -huh. no concept. So we're, we're going to make this happen. All we right. really are. We'll uh, you happens. know, in our last special, we answered viewers' questions. Okay. Uh, they came up, and uh, we've got a viewer question. Let's roll the prompter to that viewer question. That would be very helpful. Okay, I guess I guess we don't have the viewer question. Oh, darn. So, doggone it. Uh, uh, darn. Oh, you know, you did, you did uh, uh, your... You're through mom's eyes. Yes. You've got that great series that yes. we do on the third hour. And you did an Olympic version of it. You know what? Noah Lyles, one of the Olympians who we'll actually be talking with a little later today. Uh, we talked to, a, you know, archery mom, uh, you know, one of the youngest swimmers. She's 15 years old. Her name is Katie. Um, her mom. It was so fascinating to watch these moms when the cameras weren't rolling, mm -hmm. swapping phone numbers so that they can meet up again and bond because they're in a special club when yeah. you're the mother or a parent of an Olympian. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, we are just going to check started. that out on the site and, as well. And, and I appreciate you coming in three hours early. So what am I going to do for the next three hours now? Well, I can give you one more thing. Could you help us bring Hanode in? Come here. Our, you know, Hanode means mascot. sunrise. That's our new right. mascot. My fellow petite buddy. What's up, Hanode? That's right. You are the same size as Hanode. We are the same I size. I love it. I love it. Uh, uh, in fact, we're going to have Hoda Kotb coming in in just a little bit. But Hanode had to get here which is amazing. And so let's take a look at Hanode's journey home. We were inspired by Japan's <laughs> love of mascots, so we decided why not? Let's get one of our own. I see some picture of the TV studio and they are very beautiful set. All right, now to the big moment. Without it's further ado, so our Today Show mascot is Ta-da! One of our brilliant producers here is playing yeah. the role. I was a little bit embarrassed and I didn't really want to tell people that it was me. Phoebe is an incredibly cultured Japanese scholar. Bonus is she's a fantastic mascot. That's right. You're going to pick the name. That's right. A battle at the top between Hino Day, which means sunrise, and Kiyokuma, which means today bear. We're bringing her home. Here he is, safe and sound. Put your hands together for Hinode! 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 Nice to meet you. Hinode. Oh, hey, you. Isn't she the cutest? She I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. This summer. Welcome to Tokyo. The world meets again to chase glory. Gonna have to put my heart in your hands. Can you hold that for me? And each morning. It was a stunner of a race. You set a world record. I woke up and I was like, wow. We share powerful stories. How did it feel to win gold? It's like an unforgettable moment. And celebrate together. Lydia Jacoby, just a few hundred of your closest friends. We did this together. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. Welcome back. We are here on Olympic Plaza. Our crew is getting this. This is going to be a segment on later. Whoa, they ran like, boy, they just got out of here. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to be doing a food segment with Candace Kumai here in a little bit. Uh, we're giving you a behind-the-scenes look at how the shows are broadcast here on our Olympic Plaza. So if you watch the Today Show, you know in Tokyo, Hoda became America's super fan. In fact, she was the unofficial team mom for Team USA's gymnasts. And nobody could cheer more than our own Hoda Kotb. Check it out. Gymnastics venue. Hello. I'm sanitizing. I'm taking my temp. We're about to see gymnastics. Did I pass? Yes. I yes. Tip the parade. Yay. And that's the gymnastics venue right there. We're going to go inside and see if Team USA is going to get a medal. Feeling good. Feeling good. Like I should. We're here. Come, let me show you. This is where we walked. Come. These are our lucky seats. My lucky seat. And usually, the gymnastics team is sitting right across from us. We may be a little early. We don't see them yet. It might be a teeny bit early, but. We like to be here early because we like to be ready, okay? We like to get ready and get the good luck charms going. We're trying to make it back to the show because Jay just won a gold medal. We're gonna try to get some hair and make it get on the air. Do you think we can make it? Put it's it in my daughter's yet. dress. Oh. She put it in my luggage for good luck. So I took it to the meet. And okay, I just started you. twirling it around, <laughs> and it gave me good luck for all of you. All right, we're back live, ladies and gentlemen. Hoda, 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 Hoda. How are you, baby? Oh. Hi, oh. How are you? Oh, my gosh, you flew. Is this good? I'm like shocked. This is your first look at the boss. I know, you guys, this is awesome. Hi, you guys. So, yeah. So, uh, first of all, how are you feeling I, I, with, the, with, the, with the flight? You've landed yesterday. I landed yesterday. By the way, on my flight, as I'm getting my bag and getting on there, I see Simone. Simone Biles was on my flight. I see Grace, I see Suni, I see Jade, I see Jordan. Like, the whole crew was on our flight. They were adorable. They had they were like little girls with huge bags getting on the flight. It was amazing. It was really fun. So how'd you sleep last night? You know what? I couldn't get it. 
Could you get it when you first landed? Yeah, when, but it was different because you know you had the kid, you're Haley and Hope. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I didn't have anybody at home. So. By the way, I had a ticker tape parade. It was like a mini oh, ticker tape parade with these two Lord. kids. It was amazing to come home, and it's great. Like you know, we go on these long trips. We mm -hmm. miss our kids, but. It was so fun to come home last night out. One of the best moments of, yeah. of the Olympics was the fact that Haley had packed a dress in, in your suitcase. By the way, I took it everywhere with me. I know. Haley kept seeing the dress. She was like, that's my dress. That's my dress. Mm -hmm. And she was asking about if Simone got to see it. Did Simone see her dress? Mm -hmm. And yes, she did. What, what were they like when you got home? It was, um, it was beautiful. I mean, you know what's funny? When you go on a trip that is as satisfying as being mm -hmm. able to witness like what we saw at the Olympics, Olympics. Like, I loved every second there, but I'm trying to do this thing where I'm doing a be here now, right. like wherever I am. Like, I'm at the Olympics, I want to be at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my kids, but I don't want to spend my whole time thinking, where are my kids? Right. And when I was with my kids, I was 100% with them when I got home. They had two chairs out, pulled up to the front door. They were waiting when I got there. <gasps> it was the cutest, um. sweetest. Um, I just hung on last night. Oh. I just hung on tight last night. That's beautiful. Yeah. So we, we, yeah, we, we've covered a number of uh -huh. these games. Uh -huh. How was uh, Tokyo different for you than, than others? Um, it was probably the one I underestimated the most because mm -hmm. I thought when we, when we got there, it probably wasn't going to be much access. I said, it's going to be great, but it's not going to have all the things we're used to. Right. Al, it was like home run after home run. I mean, I think, like, you know, you're always so proud of your country, but there was something about this Olympics this time around, mm -hmm. what these guys had been through, like I felt like my heart swelled like 10 times its size, watching our, our gymnasts, our hockey players, our everybody, everybody do their thing. I don't know, I felt, um, I, I was just surprised yeah. at how, how much these kids could overcome. And I thought about the mental health piece, which is bigger this time than any other time. Huge. But I was also thinking, like these kids, are never at home. They, they don't have any loved one with them. So right. it's like the most stressful time in their lives, probably. Where's their mom? Not there. Where's their dad? Not there. Where's their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their husband, their wife? They're not there with them. Right. So I feel like that piece of it may brought all that stuff to the forefront. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, they felt vulner really super vulnerable. Yeah. Um, but I got to say, talk about rising up, man. Talk about, I can picture, I'm just thinking, I can picture Simone walking out on that final day. The bean is not her favorite. It's the one she got the bronze in in Rio. She walks out and I looked at her face and my heart was like, it's like boom, 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 boom. Like, how's she gonna do? And you watched her just like get the eye of the tiger yeah. and nail it, yeah. like nail it. It was nuts. And and yeah, look, it, it, you became uh, the unofficial <laughs> team mom for the, <laughs> gym, the U.S. women's gymnast, <laughs> gymnastics team. I mean, you know, they were looking at you. <laughs> it, it, it has to feel kind of good. Well, I was looking at them. Yeah. I really was. I was looking at them because I actually, Al, think in my life. I feel like I have a role that I have always played. And that's like, instead of being the person being cheered, I like being the cheerleader. Like mm -hmm. that's my favorite role in life. It always has been. But I think like when I was at, in high school, I was the one who was yelling in the, like I would always be the loudest one. Like the one they're like, what, what is she doing? But I feel like in this moment, they always look to their moms and dads. Sure. They always look for somebody. And imagine you're in an empty stadium having the moment of your life and you can hear a pin drop. Nobody's there. Yeah. Now look, I almost got in trouble while I was there about 10 yeah, times. Yeah, you were, because we weren't supposed to be touching the athletes. And you know, <laughs> you, 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 get a, you get a hug from Simone and then, and then Suni Lee says, can you give me a hug? Yes. I mean, you're being asked to give a yes. hug. How do you say no to that? Well, well I knew it got bad because the IOC people weren't, weren't fond of it. Wait, Al, I was at the gymnastics on the last day and I see our security guard. I go, oh, hey, are you here to watch this? He said, no, I'm here to watch you. I go, what? No, Al. I was, I was one day away from being bounced. You were one day. You know, three was, strikes and you're out. I was so close. So we put out a call to social yep. media, uh, and we, we want folks to ask questions. So this yep. is from a viewer on Instagram. How what? many suitcases of your own did you, did one. you bring? Only did you, one. Only one. I only bring one. No. Only one. I underpack. All I did was wear the USA gear. I didn't even wear anything that I brought, mm -hmm. but I, I always just do one. I'm a light packer. <laughs> East Coast, when you were uh, there in, yeah. in Tokyo, did you try to stay on East Coast or were you on Tokyo time? Or, um, or I was on, by the way, I was on both times uh -huh. because I ended up 
waking up at four, because you know the sun rose at four in sure. Tokyo, which yeah, was the land weirdest. of the rising sun. Right. So I woke up at four, FaceTimed the kids, did a little workout, da 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 da, went for breakfast at six. And then you're then you realize our show's on in the evening time, so you're right. trying to pull it through. Yeah. I just went on fumes. I didn't care. <laughs> I, I knew I was going to be home soon. Uh, here's the. Uh -huh. I don't think people realize uh -huh. uh, you could have been an Olympian in that you, know you were part of. Uh, what was your sport? I, I, you, you you did shot put, didn't you? You know what? Didn't you do shot put and discus? My coach was like in high school. They're like, who's the biggest one? You come here. We want you to try it. So I still remember. Because throwing the discus in the shot put was fun, but but it could get really bad, really bad. I remember I was at a meet, Al. It was like a big meet, uh -huh. and the way it works when you're throwing discus is they they call the worst person first with the lowest score. Then it goes down. And my only wish on these things is like, don't call me first, please God, don't call me first, don't call me first. So the announcer goes, Marsha Green or something, and I go, oh thank God, Marsha Green. Got from Marsha yes. Green. And the Marsha. Marsha's, Marsha's not here. Okay, let's go to the next person on the list. Hobo, Haboko, Kabobi, Kabobi. I was like, yeah. so I get, in the, I get in the ring. This is how you do it. Like I'm throwing this way, you go like this. You spin, spin, throw like that. That's the move. That's the move. Is that the move? So That's bad. the move, ladies Wait, and gentlemen. Ow. Three times, because there's a gate that goes around, it was like one was there, one was there, and one like wafted out. It was like the pits, man, but. Be thankful she doesn't have a discus over there. You're okay? welcome. You Hoba welcome. Kobo, ladies and gentlemen. It? It's Hoba over. Kobo. It's, it's over. over. It's, it's over. over. When we come back, we're going to pull back the curtain, show you what it feels like to be a guest on today. Silver medalist, Michaela Skinner, Krista Michaela? Palmer. That's right. Take Krista? us on a ride from atop the podium to meet Hoda on the Today Show set. But first, one of the biggest questions you asked on social media, what did we eat in Tokyo? So here's a behind-the-scenes look at some of the food. What did we eat? We, well, take a look. What Here it is. Drink? Just, oh, yeah. We got it. Oh, oh Krispy Kreme. Get out of here. We got a Krispy Kreme Are you kidding wow. me? Wow. <laughs> there was nothing like the food. Uh, the tempura. Mm. From coffee jelly. I'll be there in a minute. I'm still chewing my coffee. <laughs> to mochi. Mm. Delicious. And maybe just a little bit too much sake. We should toast. Carry your drink. Yeah. Have you been hitting this early? To Tokyo. We gave everything a try. This is yakisoba pan. It's noodles in a hot dog bun. Natto. 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 Mm. Kind of a cross between beans and a, and a rice krispie. Strip. OK. Even when things got a little sticky. This is actually stuck to my hand now. <laughs> like, I can't. I'm going to sleep with it. We weren't complaining, and we couldn't stop eating. What's your technique? Just like this. I'll show you. Oh my god. Hold it up high. Come on, let's see it. Al lifted. Oh, that's how you do it. Oh, no. oh that looks much easier. Oh. Al's a classy guy. I know. I need a bib. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. You're on the Today Show. You want to yeah. give uh, a big quick hi, Mom? Hi, family. Uh, we did it. Uh, we should probably get oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. We got your dad and your brother. Oh, I see you have my glasses that you stole from me. <laughs> You called your dad and mom. And we just had this little moment where it was just like, we did it. What would you like to say to your daddy? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> this summer. Another Olympic-sized morning. The world meets again. And each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it. You did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine.
and good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Welcome back, everybody. We're here on Olympic Plaza, New York City, along with our mascot, Hanode. Little known fact about Hanode, she actually also edits videotape, even with those little hands. It's, it's very interesting. <laughs> but nice to see her. She's very talented. One of the reasons we all were in Tokyo to bring you live, in-person interviews with the biggest and the best athletes moments after they compete. From our podium, from the podium to our set, take a look behind the scenes at how they got to us every morning. Hello Today Show followers, my name is Lucy and I'm about to take you behind the scenes of when an athlete arrives at the set for the Today Show. Every second of the arrival has been perfectly choreographed and today a behind the scene look at when US gymnast Michaela Skinner joined today just hours after she won her silver medal on vault and US diver Krista Palmer joined just a few hours after she won bronze. The Today Show team in Tokyo is made up of 60 people and it takes 12 of those people to get each Olympian from the podium to our set. It's about an hour before Michaela Skinner joins us on the Today Show when she is met by runner Desmond. They come through this entrance here, which for athletes only, we're very strict on our COVID regulations here, of course. Michaela! You just arrived at the <laughs> Today Show to show off that beautiful medal. Let's get you in the lift and get you up to the set. Alrighty. You never know who is going to walk through these doors flashing their medal. Here comes Alex Mazialis from the men's foil fencing team. Congratulations. And up they go, up to the Today Show set where they are met with Hoda and Craig. Up you go. Ready for the Today Show. Let's go. <laughs> We're joined by Krista, who's just won bronze in diving. And we're about to walk into the Today Show. So are you stoked about becoming on the Today Show? I am so excited. This has been like surreal for me, this whole experience, and I'm just looking forward to it. Backstage, we have five makeshift green rooms for guests. In the green room, they take time out and get mic'd up to further interviews. And of course, we offer a wide range of snacks for our Olympians, including sushi rolls, baklava, pizza, udon noodles, and the all-time favorite mac and cheese. Okay, I gotta hit the sushi first, that's for sure. And before they go live, a little fun in our Instagram booth set. Then it's showtime. Michaela waits for the cue that she's live from our stage manager, Yosef. Athletes must be separated. All of the Today Show staff stay six feet away from all the athletes at all times. Athletes must remain masked until the moment they go on air. But first, a quick tease to let the audience know Michaela's coming up right after the commercial break. Five, four, three, two, one. How are you? I'm so good. Okay. Wow, that's right. Amazing to see. I didn't even know all that was going on. Well, uh, Hanode, did you have a good time today? Thank you. You're a little very nice. We love our little Hanode. And thank you for joining us for a behind-the-scenes look at today at the Olympic Games. I hope you'll st stay tuned all day, today all day, throughout the day, for more interviews with all of your favorite Olympians. For all of us here at the Today Show, welcome to another thank you for joining us in another edition of Today. News than any other news organization in the world. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. NBC.
ABC News than any other news organization in the world. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. First off, let's start out with the fact that you're going to be the first class of surfers at the Olympics. I was looking at some home videos of you as like a little girl holding a small trophy. And I thought to myself, I wonder like this, even when you were little, I mean, it was never a possibility even to yeah. think that you could compete at the Olympics. Now it is a possibility and you're the first. Yeah. That must just feel incredible. No, it feels amazing. When I was a little girl, the Olympics wasn't even a, like a possibility. It wasn't even something that I thought about. and. It's been really fun to see how far the sport has grown and progressed in just the time that I've been on tour and been involved with the sport. Um, it's really come so far, and then to have it recognized at an Olympic level and to be a part of it is like such an honor. I'm so excited. <laughs> and you've dedicated literally your life up to this sport to represent Hawaii, and, and I know how much of that is a part of you. It must be also this just tremendous honor. Yes, I'm, of course, honored and proud to be an American and representing the USA, but more specifically Hawaii. Um, we're a really tight-knit community, and I feel just a connection to so many people here, and I feel like I'll be going to the Olympics with all of them with me. Surfers have this like natural connection to the earth, to the environment, to like the natural world. I mean, that you have to be sort of one with the waves and understanding weather and wind and all of those things as a part of it. How would you describe sort of your relationship with surfing, what is that relationship? Surfing is one of those really unique sports because you are working with Mother Nature and there's like this intangible connection that I feel like any surfer has with the ocean because I mean there's sometimes that you're sitting out in the ocean and you don't necessarily even see a set coming but you feel it and you start moving in that direction and then like 20 seconds later there's a wave and that's like, it's almost spiritual in a way. Um, because you have to really trust your intuition and your gut and feel what's around you. And I love it. I think it's really special. Yeah, and you sort of have to build that relationship. I mean, it, you probably don't have those instincts right away. It probably takes time to yeah. sort of like, like any relationship, you know what I mean? <laughs> to know like the nuances of someone you've got to spend time, like yeah. personal time. For sure. I mean, it takes years and years of and hours and hours and being in the water and having, you know, experiencing all the different kinds of conditions and then putting it in the memory bank and picking up on that during another day that's very similar, but it's never the same. So yeah, it's, it, it does, definitely takes a lot of time to figure it out. And you never actually ever have it figured out. That's probably the, that's probably <laughs> the most challenging part. Yeah. Is you're like, I think I got this. And then she throws you a curveball and yeah. it's a wave you've never seen. Yes, exactly. Or conditions you totally didn't prepare for. And I think it's a very humbling thing. I love working with the ocean because it's never the same. You have to learn how to adapt and flow. And that's life, right? right. Is yeah. that daunting when it comes to competition? I mean, like, if, if you're a skier, you pretty much know the mountain. <laughs> you pretty much know the curves. You know the bends. Like, you know where the, the hard parts are. When you're dealing with the ocean, and especially yeah. in, in Japan, like it's sort of like, well, I guess I'll figure it out, right? I mean, totally. I mean, I think that's one of the hardest things for me is I'm a perfectionist and I'm a control freak. So I like to try to control as much as I can. But then at a certain point, especially when that horn blows and you're out in the water for your heat, you're kind of like, OK, I've done everything I possibly could. And there's only a few things I can control, which is myself and the waves that I pick and how I surf them. But then the rest of it's out of my hands. I have to you know, trust the universe that it's going to work out. And at the end of the day, um, you know, when I've done everything I can and there's just things I can't control, you just have to be like, all right, well, that's that. <laughs> Gotta roll with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think it is about yourself that has allowed you to reach this point? I think there are a lot of factors that have gone into my success or just to where I am today. I think you know, a huge part of that is my support crew. I wouldn't be where I am today without the amazing group of people behind me. That includes my dad as my coach, my wonderful husband, Luke. I have a great team of sponsors behind me that have been there from the very beginning. And just all of my family and my friends, there's been a, you know, just a tremendous amount of love behind me. And I think that's really carried me to where I am today. And what about you? I mean, Me. we know they've been supportive, <laughs> yeah. but what is it about um, Carissa? There's just you that's going to the Olympics, so what, yeah. what is it? 
I don't know. I think that there is definitely that genuine love and that motivation for surfing and just wanting to do my very best in the water. I think that I really want to share a part of myself with people through my surfing and hoping that using that platform I can hopefully make a positive impact on other people. So I think there's definitely that driving force and I feel like it's really empowering for me to you know, set goals and overcome challenges and it's not always been easy, but I think that definitely has made me who I am today. Yeah, and speaking of inspiring, we were on the beach, saw the girls that you're mentoring. What do you think, if you could choose one message for them to walk away from you with, what would you want them to say, Carissa taught me this, what would you want the this to be? I think for me, for, for like that next generation of females, it would just be that you literally can do anything you set your heart and mind to and that each and every one of us has been put on this earth for a unique reason, so to embrace who you are. I think just living authentically is um, super important. And the body image, that's, that's a big part of this, right? It's yeah. It's teaching them to just sort of <laughs> accept yourself. For sure. I think there's definitely a lot of different um, messages that I would love to pass on. And, and positive body image and self-confidence is something I definitely love to encourage. I know that I feel like a lot of young women struggle with that or go through that because, I mean, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things going on in our world today and um, it can be misleading at times. And so I, if I can just encourage girls to stay on your own path and stay true to who you are and know that you are beautiful just the way you are, uh, that would be awesome. Did you go through that journey? Did you struggle with body image? I did. I did. And I'm never going to say it's perfect. I still look in the mirror sometimes and don't feel that great about myself. But I think there's strength in vulnerability. And so being able to share your story and share your weaknesses, I think that we all have them. So if we can, you know, share them. We can come together and be stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Women in surfing is like, it's amazing how they're sort of taking over the sport in some senses. My <laughs> husband, you know, surfed in Hawaii like years ago, and yesterday he was out surfing, and um, after seeing you, he was inspired to go get on the board. Awesome. <laughs> so he, he was out surfing, and he's like, Katie, like when I was out here 10 years ago, it was me and 30 dudes. Yeah. He's like, I was the only guy on a board. He's like, it was all women. He's like, and I was like choking up. He's like, I was so excited to see that, like that yeah. the sport has changed its look. I mean, the landscape is different. I'm so stoked to hear that um, because when I was a little girl, it was literally just me and maybe one other person, another woman in the lineup. And now like at my favorite spot on the South Shore, there's like eight to 10 little girls in the lineup every single day. It's a testament to how much the sport has grown and the WSL, which is the league that I'm a part of, has done a great job, you know, broadcasting it and getting it to more eyes and to, you know, giving the little girls something to strive for. And right. um, I think it's great. What would you say the process, the journey that you've taken to get to this point, what's the most valuable lesson you'd say you've learned? Well, I've been competing on the championship tour for 10 years now, and every year I'm challenged in some different way, and I've sure. learned something new. I think one of the greatest lessons I've learned is how to be resilient. I mean, I didn't have, like, the strongest start to my, my season, and I've always struggled with just rolling with the punches, and if I get knocked down, to get back up and not to tear myself down. And so I think this past year, I kind of... Just learn how to pick myself up, dust myself off, and then continue on with a smile. And I hope that that will be valuable moving into the Olympics. Have you always been just super happy? <laughs> you seem like you just wake up with a smile on your face. I think I'm naturally a very happy person. I mean, there's a lot to be grateful for every single day. And I live a blessed life. Um, but I'm not going to set those unrealistic expectations. I definitely have my days where I'm upset and I cry and I'm frustrated and I'm angry. And there's definitely times I've wanted to give up in this journey. I mean, it's not perfect. But I think I just keep it to a small group of people. Right, keep yeah. that limited. Yeah, I just, yeah, but you just, you sort of emulate like a general just like oh, positivity. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. but you have all, I mean, there's a lot to extract from, from <laughs> all this amazing nature and, and happiness in your surroundings. It seems like you're, thanks. yeah. Thank you. You take all that in. Yeah, and I've also started working with a sports psych, mm. um, which I've found really valuable. And it's helped me to kind of focus on the right things and process things in a positive way and find that balance with life and, and my professional career. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. 
for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. This is kind of like normal routine for you. Yes, I, I usually wake up early, and then depending on where the surf is good, Dad and I will go and seek it out. Yes. And <laughs> being here, being able to train in your home state, I mean, that's such a luxury, right? Like, it, you don't have to go anywhere. Some people have to travel if you're a skier, if you're a, but with surfing, it's like your backyard. Oh, no, I mean, I'm so grateful I got to grow up in Hawaii uh, for that reason. We have waves all year round and some of the best waves in the world. And so uh, there's really no better training grounds. When you're out there and you're making decisions and you're training, what most often goes through your mind when you're in the waves? Well, there's a lot going on. Um, it, you know, you're dealing with the swell and the weather and, and the fact that like you're never having the same canvas. It's always something different. Obviously, I have like goals and objectives that I talk with my coach, which is usually my dad. On, um, we talk about what, what I'm going to work on maneuver wise. But nature <laughs> must present all these different challenges and you find yourselves in these scenarios. It must be interesting to always be encountering something new. Yes, and that's one of the reasons why I love surfing and I think surfing is so special is you know, you are dealing with mother nature and you're never actually ever gonna be in control. And it's really humbling, you know, you can, the minute you stop paying attention, she's gonna, you make sure you, to put you in your place, you know, so. Right. Um, yeah, I, I love it. And surfing, making its debut this year, how meaningful is that to you? This has been your life. <laughs> this is, you know, your passion, your hobby, your career. But now it's gonna take stage at the Olympics. How does that feel? Oh my gosh, it is so cool that surfing is gonna be a part of the Olympics. To be honest, when I was a little girl, the Olympics wasn't even on my radar. It was not something I even thought of or dreamed of. And I, just being able to see how much the sport has progressed in the time that I have been doing it, it and to the, to the level of the Olympics is just so rewarding. And I'm so excited to be a part of the sport and especially the women's side right now. How comforting are the waves to you? When you're not in them and you're not focused, <laughs> Is this environment sort of at where you're most at peace? Um, you know, I d definitely being in the water is where I feel the most at home, and surfing is where I feel most myself. But my home is in the back of the valley. It's nice to come here for work and then get away. And yeah. this isn't a bad place to work. I mean, not you about, have to work not about somewhere. office. This isn't a bad <laughs> office space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a rainbow in your office today. I know, it's gorgeous. I feel very blessed. How does it work with your dad as your coach? My dad taught me how to surf when I was five years old, and he's been there with me every step of the way. And of course it gets tricky at times, balancing you know, a coaching-dad relationship, but I think finally at 27, we're finally figuring it out. <laughs> you want the kinks worked out, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the good news is, like, you know, you have a certain honesty with your parents that you might not always have with somebody else. So you can probably yeah. tell them, like, once in a while, like, Dad, you well, know. We've had our fair share of you know, disagreements, disagreements. But um, like you said, the best part about having my dad as, as my coach is that he's going to be the most honest with me and know and he knows my potential um, and he's going to push me like no other person can. And of course, we're going to have our qualms, but we're always going to be able to figure it out. Yeah. So. What's life like leading up to the Olympics? Are you nervous? Are you excited? I mean, what, what are you feeling at this at this point? 
Well, um, so far, I mean, I'm really excited. This is new. This is all new. I have no expectations. This summer, another Olympic-sized morning. The world meets again, and each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it. You did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. You're on the Today Show. You want to yeah. give a big, quick hi, Mom? Hi, family. Uh, I hope they did it. Uh, we should probably oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, should Congratulations. Thank you. Is this awesome? We got your dad and your brother. Oh, I see you have my glasses that you stole from me. <laughs> you called your dad and mom. And we just had this little moment where it was just like, we did it. What would you like to say to your daddy? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> This summer, another Olympic-sized morning, the world meets again. And each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it. You did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. I have to say congratulations because you're an Olympian now. How does that feel? I'm just confused because uh, just uh, like a surprise that I, I mean that uh, we are shocked. You're shocked. Yeah. For now I'm in the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Disbelief. Yeah, exactly. So we'll get back to that in a minute then, but if we could go back and if you could tell me a little bit about your story before you came to France. How old were you when you started riding cycling? Uh, when I, wa I was uh, in Iran that I learned cycling, but uh, when I returned to Afghanistan, I didn't know there is a federation of cycling that worked for the women. But uh, I was in 11th class uh, in uh, 2011. I, uh, Federation of Cycling organized a race between the uh, school of girls and I participated in like that. I knew that there is a Federation of Cycling that works for the women. I participated in the race. After I keep in contact with the Federation, before of cycling, uh, I was the member of uh, basketball team in the school. I like a lot uh, sport. I wanted to do the sport and I wanted to find my talent in sport and continue with the national team. I tried volleyball, basketball, taekwondo <laughs> and also I uh, had a study uh, sport. I, uh, I did a different sport like a ping pong, badminton, a lot of sport but uh, I found uh, my talent in cycling and every race, uh, the finish line, it was in the mountain. And I was uh, um, always uh, first position. And I know that I have talent in uh, cycling. At the beginning, when I found uh, my talent in cycling, I wanted just to improve uh, sportively. I wanted to improve my sport, but then I see that there's not a lot of girls in cycling. And uh, I see uh, the women who wanted to do cycling, they have a lot of problems. Then my objective, it was uh, to normalize, to help uh, for normalizing uh, cycling for the women in Afghanistan. I wanted uh, to show the women, to encourage them, uh, and also to encourage their parents uh, to allow their girls uh, to do cycling, to allow uh, girls to do cycling, because I don't see any difference between uh, women and um, men. Uh, when a uh, man, uh, man can do cycling, why not a uh, woman? Uh, there's uh, no difference. And it was so strange for the people. When I participated in the race, they talk about me. 
Sometimes uh, they told me, why you uh, wear a scarf? I said, I like it, I'm comfortable with it. So what do you want people to see when they see you riding a bike? In Afghanistan, they think uh, that it's not good of, uh, for a girl uh, to wear uh, sportive clothes, to ride bike in the street. They, they never seen that it's strange. They think it's not uh, beautiful. It, it not looks beautiful. It's better uh, that the woman stay at home or study, but not cycling, not a sport like cycling. They don't like, they think it's, it's not um, in our culture, in our religion. It's um, something outside of that because of that. Um, and really it's not uh, like that. And just uh, to, to understand that uh, everyone ha has right to do what they want. I, we have to respect, I respect you, you have to respect me. It's just a question of um, understanding, logic. So when you were first cycling in Afghanistan, did you tell your family? Did you tell everyone, I'm going to go out and ride a bike? My parents, sure, because I didn't ever do anything without saying uh, to my parents, my parents always, in my parents, uh, uh, every time I wanted to do something, my parents uh, say, you can do it. They had a lot of confidence uh, to me. They, all, they never uh, say me, no, you cannot do it. It's not good for you. You, you are a girl, it's not good. Uh, they never see me, uh, they never uh, told me that. They uh, always uh, support me, encourage me. But the other family, like an uncle, uh, uh, no, they didn't know, and I don't want it. Uh, they know because uh, after see uh, they know they um, came to my parents. They said uh, that uh, they will create a problem for my parents because of that. I didn't want. But as I was uh, most of the time uh, first position, there was media that wanted to um, to interview with me. Some, I didn't want it, I refused it, but the president of uh, cycling said to me, if you want to continue cycling, you have to do interview. They like uh, it's uh, the only way to normalize Willow really, with the media. If you talk with the media, you transfer your message. It's the, well, the only way you can help uh, the other girls uh, to encourage them. So you had to, you felt you had to speak out, be yeah. very public. <laughs> yeah, it, because uh, my coach it was right. It's the only way we can uh, help uh, other girls or because uh, most of the people in Afghanistan, they didn't know that uh, in this security situation, there is a federation of cycling that was for the women like me, me, I didn't know. And uh, with the media, we can uh, show them, we can encourage. Uh, the women, their parents, uh, because of that I accepted. Good morning everybody, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're gonna do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them, doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! This summer, another Olympic-sized morning. The world meets again, and each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it. You did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. <laughs> for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. What do you want other women and girls to know about cycling? Freedom and to, to show that the women have a ability to do whatever they want. Can you tell me specifically, if you can, 
why it's dangerous for girls to ride bikes in Afghanistan? Unfortunately, some people, they think it's their responsibility to stop the girls uh, to do not uh, bike. Uh, all of, I think all of the girls who do cycling in Afghanistan, they had uh, experience that uh, uh, a man, uh, they try to, to push them or to um, frappe. To hit them? Yeah, to hit them. And uh, they come out from the window and they, they try to push. That's scary. I never know when I when uh, it's arrived to me. I know all oh, it's so dangerous. Uh, I heard it's dangerous, but I never know uh, the people can do really. After that, I never say to my parents because I know see if they know it, they will stop me because they're afraid. If the people can do it, they will do whatever because in the street there's no police. There's no camera. See uh, if do anything. Uh, so you would have to ride with boys around the our, girls. Our coach. It was in the car. Farther away. Yeah, far away. How do you feel inside when you get on a bicycle and you ride? When I am on the bike, I see the nature. I like. I love nature, and also when I uh, the wind. Uh, touch my uh, your face yeah it's like uh, I'm alive it's like a feeling of power power yeah that um, it's like something uh, that I cannot uh, really say it in the words it's hard to describe yeah um, for example sometimes uh, when I'm so tired when I don't like life when I do bike, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I said to myself, why uh, I did it before, now I'm okay. It fixes everything. Yeah, exactly. Different person on the bike. Yeah, yeah. This has been a very long journey for you. You've had to leave your own country. Your family has come with you, your parents and siblings. So you've, you've sacrificed a lot, you've been through a lot. What message do you want to send to people about what you've been through? As I said, my objective uh, from the beginning when I started cycling was uh, to normalize, to help uh, for normalizing the cycling in Afghanistan. But when I came in France, I see it's, it's not uh, just Afghanistan that have problem with diggers. Um, even in France, uh, the people, uh, they never see a girl who wear a scarf to do bike. It's a strange for them. Now, my objective is not just for Afghanistan, it's uh, for all countries. I wanted to show to all these countries that there is no problem without a scarf or with a scarf. It's, they ha all women have right to ride bike and uh, we have to respect them, their choice. And we are not here to judge people and that wearing something or to doing something. We have to respect each other and uh, respect our rights and the uh, rights of the, the others. Respect your right to get on a bike and wear a scarf and ride. Yeah, exactly. How do you feel about going to the Olympics? Are you nervous? Yeah, a little bit <laughs> because I will compete. Uh, I have a competition with the best of the world. <laughs> It's not easy, it's really, really difficult, but uh, I'm happy, I'm a part of it. When you started riding a bike in Afghanistan, did you ever think you'd be sitting here in France getting ready to go to the Olympics? Never. As a cyclist? Never, never. It's like a dream. Yeah, it's like a dream that I'm, I think I'm always in the dream. Olympic Games, it's not uh, just Olympic Games, it's really, uh, famous competition, hard competition. It's uh, every person had not a uh, chance or uh, to participate in the Olympic Games. I think I'm uh, the, I had a lot of chance to be a part of uh, Olympic Games. It's gonna be exciting.
Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and beauty editor Chassie Post, and I know trends. So each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll love in Style Finder. I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products, sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick, and I love trying out products and finding the best versions of everyday items and elevated essentials a curated list of better basics. This is Shop All Day Summer Beauty Refresh. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, contributing editor, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. We're right in the middle of summer, and it's about that time when we wanna lighten our makeup routine and take care of our skin while spending time in the sun. We're talking about rollers made with volcanic rock to help oily skin to the latest and innovative ways to apply lip color. So stay with us as we not only show you our fab finds, but tell you why we've chosen these products for your beauty refresh. And see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. And we've created a text to shop feature. Simply text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. I'm excited to show you some of the hottest beauty products of the season. Let's get started with our skin. And since it is summer, the scent, of course, is watermelon. So first up from Ulta Beauty, we have the Watermelon Sleeping Mask. And I mean, everybody loves a little summer watermelon. Well, turns out, so does our skin. Watermelon beauty products are actually a huge trend right now. And actually, watermelon fruit has been used as a beauty care secret for centuries. I mean, it's super hydrating, thus the name watermelon, right? And it also has loads of vitamin E and it's anti-inflammatory. So we were thrilled when we found this little mask that would bring all the watermelon goodness to our skin very easily. So here's how you use it. You just put it on before you go to sleep and you sleep with it, you wake up in the morning and your skin feels hydrated, it's got a glow, it's revitalized. So this is a great little affordable find. Next, we've got an eye mask that I like to call a little miracle, which you have seen all over social media. Now it's from Wander Beauty and they're called the Baggage Claim Eye Masks. And honestly, you can check your under eye baggage at the door with these. They're a multitasker. And what they're gonna do is not only do they reduce puffiness, they also reduce fine lines and wrinkles, they brighten, they hydrate. There's almost nothing these little guys don't do. I mean, they're gold. <laughs> How cool is that? And when I use them, they actually make me feel like giving myself a treat. And that's really great because it's affordable. I don't always have to go to a luxurious spa to feel like I'm taking care of myself. Six come in a pack and these are truly the next level in eye masks. So next up, we have the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream. I know it looks like it says Bum Bum on the little jar here, but in Brazil, they pronounce it boom boom. And trust us, the boom boom in Brazil is a national obsession. And it actually inspired this product. So this product is the best-selling body cream at Sephora five years in a row. And what people love so much about it is it tightens and smooths the skin. And it does that using caffeine. Yes, the active ingredient is caffeine found in guarana. So now that we've got, you know, our skin feeling smooth and tight, how about a little bit of a tan, but a safe glow? And that is Bondi Sands. This self-tanner, to say that it is popular, is an understatement. This is a self-tanner that has a social media following. It is TikTok famous, but here is why it's so popular. 
First of all, it is so easy to apply. You just use this fabulous little mitt. This mitt, this is also a number one bestseller. And you use it and you get a flawless finish every time. Also, this product, it is never orange. It's never streaky. And it is just such a natural glow. So we are really loving this for summer because you can get that great glow without damaging your skin. So we've talked about the body. So now let's talk about the brows, which are such a big trend. And I was thrilled to find this product. It's from Wonder 2 and it's called the Wonder Brow Waterproof Eyebrow Gel. And oh my goodness, people are loving it so much because it's so easy to use. Those bigger, fuller brows that everybody's uh, wearing now, you know, that are such a big trend, they are gorgeous. I love them. But what about people like me who were not born with big, gorgeous, full brows? So I was thrilled to find this because I tried it and it actually fills in my sparse brows and it looks totally natural. Plus, I mean, it took almost no time. This product is also waterproof and smudge proof. I've tried, you know, with the precision pencils of before to create a brow. I walk outside in the humidity and the heat and the first chance I see a mirror, my entire eyebrows have melted off. Well, no more. This stuff is not going anywhere. It comes in five different shades and it is a game changer. So last but not least, you guys are not gonna believe the innovations in lip color technology. I could not believe this product. It's called the Wonder Blading Peel and Reveal Lip Color. So let me explain what this is. So it's like a semi-permanent color that transfers onto the top layer of your lip. But listen to how they do it. They use what's called liquid blading technology. So you take a little lip mask, you apply it to the lip, and then you mist it with an activating mist. And so then you wait 30 seconds and you pull the lip mask off and you've got this gorgeous semi-permanent color. It is smudge proof. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Let's run through all the products one more time. And if you saw anything here you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we shared on today's show. So we've got the Ulta Beauty Watermelon Sleeping Mask, the Baggage Claim Eye Masks, the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Body Cream, the Bondi Sands Self Tanning Foam, and Bondi Sand Self Tanning Mitt, the Wonder Brow Waterproof Eyebrow Gel, and the Wonder Skin Wonder Blading Lip Peel and Reveal Color. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Adriana Brock is talking to entrepreneur and author Dulce Candy about getting that light glowing summer look. Stay with us. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. 
Good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. You're on the Today Show. You want to yeah. skip a big quick hi, Mom? Hi, yeah. family. Uh, no, they did it. Uh, we should probably oh, my God. Congratulations. Thank you. We got your dad and your brother. Oh, I see you have my glasses that you stole from me. <laughs> You called your dad and mom. And we just had this little moment where it was just like, we did it. What would you like to say to your daddy? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, Shop Today Editorial Director, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. Our show today is all about the best beauty products for summer, so I'm super excited to talk to someone who is definitely in the know on this topic, entrepreneur and author Dulce Candy. And don't forget, there's the QR code at the bottom of your screen. You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it and shop these products right now. Or you can simply text SHOP to the number below to shop everything we're sharing with you today. Hey, Dulce, how are you? It's great to see Hi. you. <laughs> Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So we've known you for like more than a decade right now for doing your makeup tutorials on YouTube. And you have millions of followers, a lot of devoted fans. But before you got into the beauty business, you were actually in the US Army. How do you go from being in the Army to pivoting to the beauty business? I just feel like I got really lucky because I started at the very conception of YouTube and I discovered this community uh, full of women and a little bit of men at that time who were just so passionate about discussing makeup and anything related to beauty. And I just felt like since I couldn't really express that side of me, being a woman in the military, I always got in trouble for like, putting a little bit too much mascara or getting my nails done. Um, I just felt really at home within this community um, back in 2008. Wow, so you have a ton of tutorials, like everything from false lashes to bronzer to summer makeup, of course. You must have a most memorable look from all your tutorials. Which one would you say is your favorite? Honestly, one of my favorites, I was wearing like this really bright orange eyeshadow, which I normally don't do on an everyday basis, of course, but I just love to express myself through makeup and use it as a creative art. So whenever I have the time to really get creative and use really bright colors, those to me are like my favorite moments. That's so cool. I mean, that's what makeup's all about, right? Like having a little yeah. bit of fun. Do you have yeah. any beauty regrets? Cause I know I've had a few in my day <laughs> and I'm sure you have if you've made all this content. Honestly, I have so many, like a lot of my, like whenever I look back through my archives, there's so many cringy moments, um, <laughs> but I would have to say definitely just over tweezing my eyebrows and having them like really tiny is just, not a good look. <laughs> I feel like that's so relatable. We've all had like an eyebrow phase where something went wrong. I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk about summer makeup specifically. So a lot of people, it's hot outside. They wanna lighten up their look for the summertime. Do you have any makeup essentials that you swear by for like great, easy summer look? Yeah, I think for me, like the main focus is definitely the eye makeup. Um, I like to keep it very minimal, so I always love to start off with a nice buildable coverage, something very wearable and something that's not gonna look cakey as far as concealers. So this one is by CoverGirl. It's from their Clean Fresh line. And like I said, it's very buildable, very creamy, and you can either just swipe a few dots underneath your eye to look really refreshed and alive, which is something that I really love. And you can also amp it up if you just need a little bit more coverage. That's a great drugstore find. And I know you have another yes. affordable beauty find. It's the Pixie Mascara. Yes, this is one of my favorite mascaras by Pixie Beauty. This is the Large Lash Mascara. Um, um, especially for me since becoming a mom, I don't really have a lot of time to do like the strip lash. So this is gonna give you the look of fake lashes because it has a really incredible brush 
that is really going to give you a lot of volume length and it's also really nice if you want to wear on hot days because it's not going to melt. I love that. I'm all about like easy concealer, mascara, and you're out the door. Talk to me a little bit more about the, the bronzer you have here and you have the lip oil, which these are pretty unique products that are perfect for summer. Yeah. For me, for the summertime, this is a product by Physicians Formula. It's the Sculpting Bronzer. And the reason I love this one in particular is because the formula is so easy to blend. You can just swipe it on your face and you're gonna get that beautiful bronzy look. It's also gonna give you a dewy effect because it's a cream product. So I think in the summertime specifically, you want your skin to be nice and dewy and hydrated. It's going you don't wanna have too much on. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I love this one. Yeah. And what about this lip oil? I've heard of lip gloss, but tell me about okay. this lip oil. The lip oil, this is incredible. This is a new product from Sigma Beauty. It's the Renew Lip Oils. Okay. And I have all four different colors here, but this is basically a mix between a lip balm, super hydrating lip balm, and a lip gloss. You're gonna have a beautiful, beautiful, glossy and hydrated lips throughout the day. What I love about them the most is that they actually match with your own specific skin tone because of the, the way that they're formulated. So they're gonna look completely different on everybody, but again, super wearable and just absolutely gorgeous. That's so unique. I also wanted to ask you, cause you were talking about how like you love this mascara cause you're a mom and you have like no time to get out the door. I'm a mom to be. So I'm looking for some beauty advice from you. What are some simple tricks for any busy woman who just wants to get ready for summer and get out the door? I would honestly say really focus on your skincare because okay. you're not going to have to worry too much about covering up way too many things with foundation and concealer. So if you really take care of your skin, you can literally just use a little bit of concealer and blend it out. Definitely add some mascara, a little bit of lip gloss, and you're out the door. I love it. It's all about simplicity. Thank yeah, you so really. much, Dulce. <laughs> it was so great chatting with you. Hey, thank, thank you, you for so all much. your great tips. Thank you, have a beautiful day. So you're covered on the makeup, but now we're featuring the trending tools to apply it and take it off. Starting with this 14 piece brush set. So no makeup beauty routine is complete without the right tools. And this set right here is a today.com reader favorite. You get 14 brushes for just $10. People love it. It is such an incredible value with brushes that you're actually gonna use. And you know what? This pack is so big, you can even break it up and give some to your friends. It has everything from a foundation brush to a bronzer brush. I mean, it even has a spoolie so you can fluff up your eyebrows in no time. We love this one. The next one we have is the Luxe Brush Cleaner and Spinner. It's gonna keep your makeup brushes super clean and you need that to get a perfect application every time. So there's no excuse. All you have to do is use one of the collars that it comes with, you pop it on, and you literally just push a button and it does all the work for you. So there's no effort required here. It's so easy to use. Not only does it wash them, it also dries them for you. So can't go wrong here. And lastly, when you're ready to take all your makeup off, skip the wasteful wipes and try this today.com favorite. It is the original makeup eraser. And this little towel is gonna remove all your makeup with just water. And it's not gonna irritate your skin. It's gonna remove the most stubborn waterproof makeup, whether it's mascara or eyeliner. All you have to do is use the short side with all these short fibers to scrub off the makeup. And then you use the other side to wipe it off. It's so easy to use. We really love this tool. Let's run through all the products one more time. And if you saw anything here that you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below and shop all the products we shared on today's show. We have the Physicians Formula Organic Wear Sculpting Bronzer, the Sigma Beauty Renew Lip Oil, the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Concealer, Pixie Beauty Large Lash Mascara, the BS Small 14-Piece Brush Set, the Lux Makeup Brush Cleaner and Spinner, and the original makeup eraser. Up next, Chassis Post is featuring the latest beauty trends in Style Finder. Stay tuned. This summer. Another Olympic sized morning. The world meets again. And each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it, you did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it.
this summer. Welcome to Tokyo. The world meets again to chase glory. Gonna have to put my heart in your hands. Can you hold that for me? And each morning. It was a stunner of a race and you set a world record. I woke up and I was like, wow. We share powerful stories. How did it feel to win gold? It's like an unforgettable moment. And celebrate together. Lydia Jacoby, just a few hundred of your closest friends. We did this together. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. everyone, welcome back to Shop All Day. I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick, and I'm here to show you some useful products that will make your makeup routine so much easier and solutions for your skin and hair after spending time in the sun. And see the QR code on the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. We've also created a text to shop feature. Simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you. So let's get to it. First, let's get everything organized, okay? I just use something like this to organize my makeup. It sits right on my counter and I love it. This is so much better than your basic organizer. This is a 360 degree rotating makeup organizer. And the best part, it's got all of these adjustable shelves so you can really customize it to your needs. It can hold up to 30 makeup brushes, 20 skincare products, plus there's room for nail polishes, lip glosses, all the makeup essentials that you need. And so simple, all you do is give it a spin and you can find whatever it is that you're looking for on any given morning. It speeds up your routine, it makes your countertop look neat, and I also love that this is super easy to clean. Since it's acrylic, just a simple wipe down and it's fresh like it's just brand new. Okay, let's face it guys, we're gonna sweat this summer. It's inevitable. So instead of your basic blotting papers, make sure that you've got this better basic on hand. This uses volcanic stone to soak up excess oil instantly. It's from Revlon and it's a volcanic stone face roller. It works on all skin tones and it's so simple to use. Basically you just pop off the top, anywhere that you see shine. I mean, I just used it earlier on my T-zone. It's gonna instantly magnetize away all the shine. The volcanic rock is what really makes this so special. It absorbs everything and it blends seamlessly. So even if you have makeup on, you can still use this over makeup. Again, it's gonna instantly mattify any shine. And I also love that it's reusable. This is almost like a face roller with benefits. Speaking of products with many benefits, I am a huge, huge, huge fan of MD Solar Sciences. Their sunblocks for me have always been a favorite, especially lately as you know, my skin changes a little bit. I love that this product is something that I can use, my kids can use. It's great for sensitive skin. It's the Tinted Mineral SPF 30. The tint actually works on all different skin tones. It blends right into your skin. The texture is really unlike any other sunscreen I've ever used. It's lightweight, it's almost like velvety. I am a huge fan, again, of the mattifying properties of it. The fact that the tint works on all skin tones, as I get a little color, as we get deeper into the summer, I can still use this every single day. It pretty much is like my morning essential, afternoon touch-up, and evening product all wrapped into one. Now onto something super cool and innovative. We all love that look of false lashes, but I gotta be honest, they are not easy to put on yourself. These are better than your basic false lashes. These are magnetic eyelashes. Now, it sounds crazy, a magnetic eyelash, false eyelashes that you can put on by yourself at home. Bear with me, I'm gonna give you the scoop. These things are great. 
basically they come with a magnetic liner. So the trick is in the liner, the liner magnetizes to the lashes. So you apply this just like you would an eyeliner. If you can apply eyeliner, you can apply these. You put this on your lash line and then you've got all these different sets of lashes in here. They're reusable too. So you're getting 10 sets, but you can reuse them over and over again. You trim them to fit your eye. So it comes actually with a whole kit with these little scissors in there. So you can hold them up, just give them a quick snip on either side so that they fit your eye perfectly. Apply the liner, let it dry, put the lash right up to the liner, press it in and it magnetically sticks together. They're reusable and pretty much as foolproof as false eyelashes can get. Now we are moving on to your hair. So summer can do major damage on hair. I know for me, between the sun, pool, ocean, everything that's going on when you're outside having fun in the sun this summer, your hair pays the price. People are absolutely obsessed with this product. Besides the fact that it's safe for use on color treated hair, which I think is really important, especially in the summer. This protects your hair, so you're not gonna get as much hair breakage, your hair shouldn't be falling out as much, while also deep cleaning your scalp, and so it's gonna hydrate your hair, it kinda covers all the bases. Like with anything, you wanna check with your dermatologist before trying a new shampoo. It's a good one to try. Hair also can get really, really tangled in the summer. Between the pool, the ocean, I've gotta tell you, my six-year-old daughter has the most tangled hair I've ever seen in my entire life. So we are really excited to test this out. This is the Felicia Leatherwood Detangling Hairbrush. What's unique about this brush, besides the fun colors, which just kind of make me happy, this brush is bonded on three sides instead of four. So what that means is, it can run through your hair without getting all twisted up. You get more flexibility with this, so if you've got a lot of tangles, this is gonna go through your hair much easier. I mean, my daughter has the most sensitive scalp. So whether you've got really kinky curly hair, even if you've got straight hair that tends to get knotted up every now and then, this is a great bet for getting those tangles out. Again, keeping your hair from getting extra damaged in a time of year when it tends to suffer the consequences of the season anyway. Huge trend that we're seeing right now in skincare overall is this idea of patches and overnight treatments. So this is the Mighty Patch. This is way, way better than your basic acne treatment, your basic gel, anything that you may use. Upgrade it with a patch. You can see here, they're just these teeny little patches that actually mattify on the skin. They stay on all night. It works over like six to eight hours. The ingredients in there are gonna help to reduce the appearance of a blemish. And then in the morning, when you wake up, you simply peel it off. They adhere right onto your face. You don't feel like you have something on. You don't feel self-conscious about it. They're not bothering your skin while you're trying to sleep. Instead, they're really just delivering great ingredients directly to where you need them to be. Six to eight hours a night, you'll wake up in the morning and you will be one happy camper. And last but not least, as we are talking beauty sleep, this is the Bedshore Satin Pillowcase. So we all hear about the benefits of using silk and satin pillowcases for beauty sleep. It helps with hair, skin, all these different things. What I love about these is that satin is actually much more durable than silk. So this is gonna last you a long time. These are stain resistant. It comes in all these really great colors. There definitely is something for everybody, no matter what your home decor looks like. And you can easily wash these at home. They're easy to clean, which with silk pillowcases isn't always the case. They're zipper free as well. So you don't have any zippers that are gonna snag on your skin, which again is huge if you're using a satin or silk pillowcase. You wanna make sure that you're getting all the benefits and your hair isn't getting tangled up in the zipper. The benefits of something like this are so expansive from anti-frizz for your hair, keeping your hair from breaking, wrinkles on your skin. I'm a side sleeper, so I tend to kind of wake up in the morning and if I'm not using a great pillowcase, my skin's all kind of wrinkled up. This is great for maintaining the integrity of your skin, and also it's not gonna wipe off any skincare products that you're using. But again, since it's stain resistant, you don't have to stress out if you put on your, your moisturizer and go right to bed, because it's really easy to clean these. Again, they're super durable. I love the pink, I put them on every pillow. I feel like when I have guests, they always appreciate it too. And when you wake up in the morning, your hair still looks as good as it hopefully did the night before. So let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got 360 degree rotating makeup organizer, the Revlon oil absorbing volcanic face roller, MD Solar Sciences mineral tinted face cream SPF 30, the Ari Shine 3D 5D magnetic eyelashes with eyeliner kit, the anti thinning shampoo, Felicia Leatherwood detangling hairbrush, 
Mighty Patch, and Bedshore Satin Pillowcase. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases that are made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on all your better basics. And for our show, it's been so much fun showing you our favorites. And if you missed something you liked, don't worry. All you gotta do is text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we shared today. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop All Day. These are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there, into our incredible world. Woo! Come by. Come by. Welcome to a special edition of Incredible World. I've been on a lot of adventures on this show, but it's been a true privilege to be here in Tokyo during these unique and historic Olympic Games. During my time here, I've gotten to explore the ancient roots of Tokyo, visited historic temples, and even learned about the complex sport of horseback archery. I couldn't leave this beautiful place without having a little bit of fun drinking some Japanese whiskey and sake. So, come discover some amazing places and people with me and our incredible world. Japan's unique culture combines high-tech international cities and historic hidden beauty with its mountainous terrain unchanged for centuries. The roads to Tokyo are a journey back in time. One of the most famous called the Nakasendo Way. Nakasendo Way means the, the way through the mountains. This is one of five roads that led from the shogun's capital of Edo, which is present-day Tokyo, up to Kyoto. The story of this ancient path, as historian Oleg Benesh explains, is vividly depicted in these 19th century woodblock prints. Here we see a few pilgrims, we see peasants, we see people carrying goods, and we don't see any wheeled traffic. Someone wearing kind of a basket, this strange headgear was worn by Buddhist monks, a mask from another era. And not unlike the road to Tokyo 2020, embarking on this journey required strength and courage. This looks like it might be the start of a samurai procession. I think you can see people wearing two swords. Out. Two swords, they wore Usually, two so swords. Samurai would normally wear two swords. These days, the roads provide fresh air for hikers seeking a break from the troubles of modern life and the pandemic. They won't feel nature and uh, like a Japanese old culture. In the olden days, this 350 mile trek took two weeks and along the route were 69 so-called post towns. You can see how people have never arrived. We've got a few horses here, people having a chat. It's a wild west kind of scene. It certainly has that feeling. I mean, I think there's a few uh, fewer six-shooters than you might have in the American Wild West, but uh, yeah, it certainly got that vibe. This is the ancient post town of Sumago. I mean, it looks like a movie set, right? I mean, uh, uh, everything is so well preserved. You don't see any cars, so it looks and feels like it did 100, 200 years ago. <laughs> in the tourist office, Mr. Fujiwara unravels one of the original maps. He tells us it charts a route through the mountains where travellers encounter beautiful bamboo forests, waterfalls, shrines and castles. This image here is of um, Inuyama Castle, which is the oldest surviving castle keep in Japan. It still exists today. The road could be dangerous too. In the early days, there were bandits. This bell is for scaring off bears. At the end of a long day, a welcome chance to rest, checking into an inn, or as the Japanese call them, a ryokan. Yeah, so this would be a traditional Japanese inn, and we can see a lot of paper sliding doors. See everyone is, is eating their meals. And you get to have a bath. And you get to have a bath. This past few years, we've all felt a little like weary travelers escaping to Japan's historic mountain road. A chance to forget the troubles of today 
and take a breath. Wow. And if you get the chance to travel on the Nakasendo Way, you get one of these amazing stamp books where oh. they'll stamp for you every post town that you've stopped in oh, or in cool. with these beautiful little stamps. So it's really, that's, it's, that's really lovely. Yeah. And my children have taught me never to come back with a, on a, from a trip without gifts. So here we go. These are some sweets from the local area. They come in this lovely wrapped box, but okay. I've put them in a they're chestnut flavor. Yeah. Chestnut. Um, um, and um, see what you think. Right. <laughs> Pass that down. <laughs> Take one and pass oh, it down. Stab it. Okay, here we go. I don't know how else to do it. What are they called? Watch here? out, because you remember what happened with the cotton candy. Okay. By the way, that was so funny. Do we eat? Mm. Yum. You want like one? That? Well, that's good. Mm. I, I've had a few already. Right? It's yummy. <laughs> you want one? Here, I'll get two. Like coffee. I got yours. Coffee. Yeah, it's mm. caramelly. Chestnut? What is it called? Here, here, eat it. It's getting weird. Okay. Oh, it was weird an hour ago. Thank you. Yeah, and I can't wait to. Uh, I didn't expect that to go there. Yeah. Thanks, I like it. thanks for the treat. These are great. These are really good. This summer. Another Olympic-sized morning. The world meets again, and each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it. You did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. This summer. Welcome to Tokyo. The world meets again to chase glory. I'm gonna have to you put my heart in your hands. Can you hold that for me? And each morning. It was a stunner of a race, and you set a world record. I woke up and I was like, wow! We share powerful stories. How did it feel to win gold? It's like an unforgettable moment. And celebrate together. Lydia Jacoby, just a few hundred of your closest friends. We did this together. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. You can't miss the unparalleled beauty of Kyoto. The city is the cultural heart of this country. But right now, that heart is hurting. Temples and shrines at every turn in the historic city of Kyoto. More than 2,000 of them many at least twice as old as the United States. We climbed the narrow streets to Kiyomizu Dera, a temple dating back to the year 778. Just stunning. Kiyomizu Dera means temple of pure water, said to be infused with prayer granting powers. Write a wish on a piece of paper. For my children to be happy. And if it dissolves, it comes true. And with visitors down 60%, the dearest wish here, like for so many of us, is for the pandemic to be over. In the Gion district, young women dress in traditional kimonos, a time-honored fashion. Geisha, known as Geiko in Kyoto, still entertain visitors with music and dance from a bygone era. It's not just job, it's the way of life. Geiko Tomitsuyu says COVID restrictions have meant financial hardship and worries for the future. It's a tradition that's passed on through teaching. Mm -hmm. So if people aren't teaching, it's not yeah. being passed on. Exactly. <laughs> she says the Geiko have shared resources to get by. Women supporting women, a culture worth preserving. I believe Geiko is one of the most like oldest job for like business woman, like very, mm, how can I explain? Mm. Well, you don't need a man. No, <laughs> exactly. Kyoto entertains the senses and nourishes the soul. Monk Join Terrace Mahe practices mindfulness at Kodaiji Temple. The, hello. He says the pandemic has forced many to slow down and discover their center 
For me, a beginner's course in Zen meditation. First, you need to sit properly. My knees kind of hurt a little bit. <laughs> a clap of wooden blocks begins the session. The ringing of the bell reminds you to concentrate, focus on your breathing and posture. A whack on the back with a wooden stick yeah. <laughs> is, I'm assured, aimed only at awakening, bringing you back to the here and now. Experiencing Kyoto's timeless charm, a chance to escape in a city touched by the troubles of today, but where culture and beauty endure. Many Japanese people believe in both Buddhism and the ancient religion of Shinto. You could say they believe in a higher power, which means you get some really magical moments, guys. For example, there, there's a, a saying that if you walk between two rocks blindfolded and you can watch young people do this, then you'll find true love if you reach the second rock. Oh. It's really, really nice. The silver lining, without so many international visitors, we got to see many young Japanese enjoying their heritage and, and enjoying the place. So, Wait. really wonderful. Japan's famous alcoholic drink, sake, has been brewed here for over a thousand years. And now the country is being praised for another tipple, whiskey. I went to find out how these two great drinks are made, and more importantly, how they taste. For relaxing times, make it Suntory time. Cut to nearly 20 years since that seminal movie. Suntory time. Japanese whiskey has become a global phenomenon. Ryu, hey. Hello. So tell me, how do the Japanese drink whiskey? First, a highball. Whiskey and soda. That's good. It's really clean flavor. Next. It's called Mizuari. So just a whiskey and a water. Yeah. And the third way? On the rocks. On a rock. It's all about the taste. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's good. So how do these Japanese whiskies compare with scotch? You drink a scotch whiskey, mm -hmm. it's like you have reached in, mm -hmm. taken a bunch of mud in yes. the highlands of Scotland yes. and that's put it, it in your mouth. This does not taste anything like that. No. This is like you're standing on a mountain in Japan. A mountain in Japan is exactly where the Chichibo distillery gets two of its vital ingredients the pure water and the Mizunara wood, which is made into the casks where the whiskey matures. It takes three, 10, or even 30 years to make a great whiskey. It's nice. It's a very oriental flavor, very unique. And it's the uniqueness of Japanese whiskey that New York-based ambassador for Suntory, Gardner Dunn, says America loves. I think once you put liquid to lips, you understand why it's so good and why it's so popular. It was designed for the Japanese palate, uh, so a little bit more uh, refined, subtle, yet complex. Then there is that other famous drink from Japan. Sake. Sake. Sake! They have been making sake here at the Kamatsuru Brewery since 1873. Master brewer Koji Tomoyasu tells me the Japanese have been fermenting rice to make sake for more than a thousand years. Three tons of rice is steamed in here every day. Yeast is poured into these vats. Out of them comes world famous sake. Like the one Kamatsuru's boss, Akanori Fujiwara, pours for me now. The same. President Abe of Japan poured for President Obama. It's like flowers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Traditionally, sake is drunk from a cedar wood cup. I love the idea that you, you want to taste the wood as well yes. as the, the, yes. the wine. Yes. Ria Yoshitaki, who lives in London, is a sake expert. So I pour it for you. Good sake nowadays, drink very cold. And Ria suggests sake is even good for you. You can either use for your skin, for the tonic, but also you pour into your bath a tiny bit. Not the whole bath. No, no. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, it's busy. Sparkling sake. Kanpai. Kanpai. 
Sake or whiskey? Whichever your preference in that glass is a true taste of Japan. I just want to be clear, there is no scientific evidence that taking a bath in sake is actually good for your skin. But, but it, it can't is. hurt. I'm willing to try it. <laughs> yeah, well, it is fun to drink. And so let me just pour you Thank some you, of Kira. President Obama's okay. sake. I'll pass it down. Different beautiful glasses. These glasses are yeah. gorgeous. Yesterday I gave you sweets that made it hard to eat. Okay. Now I'm trying to get you I drunk. liked those. Thank you. Oh, this this is pretty. Good. I love the. Are these traditional little sake glasses? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. I have okay. No you have no idea. <laughs> I feel like we should we should toast. Carry your drink. Yeah. Okay, toast. Oh, I pulled it on myself. Be careful. Yeah. Are you? Oh, wow. Are you? Yeah. Have you been Have you been hitting this early? To Tokyo. What's going on there? Tokyo. To Tokyo. To Tokyo. Good luck to, to Tokyo. Simone. That's it. Yes. How about that? Yeah. yeah. This summer, another Olympic-sized morning. The world meets again, and each morning we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it. You did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. This summer, another Olympic-sized morning, the world meets again. And each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it. You did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. This summer, another Olympic-sized morning, the world meets again. And each morning, we share powerful stories. America is proud of you. You did it. You did it. At the Tokyo Olympics, today is where the games begin. About an hour outside Tokyo, a brave group of souls gather to practice a feat of skill called Yabusame. If it doesn't sound difficult to you, wait till you've tried it. For some folks, riding a horse provides plenty enough adrenaline. Others need more. And in the ancient Japanese sport of Yabusame, horseback archery, this Tokyo club is finding women are the majority of recruits. To many, I think, men who come and see our practice, it looks all flashy and wonderful until you hear the details of how much work is actually involved. And it seems like the women are the ones who are willing to put up with it. What you're saying is that men don't necessarily have the patience or it's, the courage. It seems like it. Enthusiast Rosa Aquino from California loves the history and unique style of riding a horse in Japan. Our goal is to be completely stable on horseback so that we can do the maneuvers, so we, we can shoot the bow and arrow from horseback. The history of Yabusame firing an arrow at three targets in quick succession stretches back 800 years to the age of the samurai. The club's master has performed in front of Presidents Bush and Obama. What did President Obama say to you? He looks like he's impressed. He says President Obama walked up and shook his hand. President Bush, as a fellow horse rider, was full of admiration. The sport is similar to cowboys, the master tells me. A cowboy is on a horse, lassoe. We're on a horse with a bow and arrow. I love your impression of a cowboy. <laughs> Thank you. My turn to try and demonstrate Rosa is right when she says it takes time to learn. Have we checked that there's nobody for a half a mile radius? Ha, 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 ha.
Mastering the sport is not only about technique, you're challenged spiritually too. The whole event is a prayer, uh, it's a sacred ritual. And as our master said, the target is not just a target, it's not the enemy. It's symbolic of the evil spirit that we're trying to get rid of. The possibilities for self-improvement are never-ending. For those who love it, this is less of a sport, more of a religion. This riding technique is so difficult that you can never be satisfied with where you're at. It's like a lesson for life. Yes. <laughs> Wow. And Rosa, who you just saw there, has a real passion for uh, this traditional uh, Yabu Same. Uh, and so she's been practicing for a few years now. Yeah. It's so difficult, she's still not able, allowed actually, to ride down that track. It's, mm. it's that much patience and the dedication required. So it's, it's amazing. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. It really is. Thanks yeah. so much, Kim. Thanks, Good Kim. to see you. You're on the Today Show. You want to yeah. skip a big, quick hi, Mom? Hi, family. Uh, hi, Mom. We did it. Congratulations. Thank you. We got your dad and your brother. Oh. I see you have my glasses that you stole from me. <laughs> you called your dad and mom. And we just had this little moment where it was just like, we did it. What would you like to say to your daddy? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. You're on the Today Show. You want to yeah. skip a big quick hi, Mom? Hi, family. Uh, no, they did it. Congratulations. Thank you. We got your dad and your brother. Oh. I see you have my glasses that you stole from me. <laughs> you called your dad and mom. And we just had this little moment where it was just like, we did it. What would you like to say to your daddy? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> The top athletes in martial arts step up to compete in Tokyo. They're stepping onto a Japanese stage with hundreds of years of history. A tradition forged in fire, made of steel, Bushido, or the way of the warrior, is now a world-famous ethos that traces back to Japan's era of the samurai. Here in Tokyo, they're still making samurai swords using ancient methods. This family has been forging blades this way for 10 generations. These swords are not just for show. They're key to Iedo, a martial art that trains you to master the katana blade. In Iai, you have to respect the enemy after the the battle. The appeal drawing in American Curtis Terry. As a combat veteran, I've always been interested in the martial arts, particularly Budo. So when you're in Japan, oh, one of the things that symbolizes Japan most to me is the katana. Enthusiasm for the martial arts can be found the world over. We visited an Aikido dojo in London. Anthea Pascaris is the lead instructor. How do you account for its international popularity? And particularly in the US. Well, it's a really appealing martial art to do. It's, it's really fun. You know, we stop rolling around as people when you're out of primary school, right? It's so much fun to start hitting the ground and rolling around. It's social. It, it brings out the most in you. It's a constant path of self-learning and getting better. Aikido focuses on taking your opponent's energy and using it against them. If there was one thing you would want me to take away, what would that be? A bruise? No, um, <laughs> sorry, definitely not. Anthea did her best to teach me the finer points of using the short staff. Yeah. Thankfully, for me at least, the first thing you learn is how to fall without hurting yourself. <laughs> it's one thing to study the martial arts as a hobby, 
It's another, of course, to train to be an Olympian. American Travis Stevens is the three-time Olympian in judo, winner of the silver medal in Rio. I think there's very few sports that instill the mindset, the discipline, and the toughness, along with the key details. Like, if you really want to be good at martial arts, you have to be detail-oriented, you have to be disciplined, you have to be mentally strong, as well as physically strong. For those athletes about to compete in the martial arts in Tokyo, Stevens says it's a rare privilege. It has a lot of historical presence to it. You know, competing in Japan is not like competing in the rest of the world. They're a very intelligent crowd. They see like the subtleties that go on in the sport and they praise the athletes for it, whether you're Japanese, European or American. So to be able to compete on that stage is probably a little nerve wracking, more so than the other tournaments, but it also has a sense of like belonging compared to some of the other events. You feel like you've made it when you're on that stage. The stage is set upon a foundation from centuries past. There may be no spectators this year, but for this sport in this historic place, the ancestors will be watching. And in a quick transformation right now, I am wearing a judo uniform like the ones being worn by the competitors here and of course, a, kind of a sword and a joe. So and before people tweet me and say earlier on you were drinking sake and now you're going to fight, people should know that British guys love to drink and then have a fight. <laughs> right. Oh. And also, I've never done judo since I was 10 years old. So you wear it well, by the way. Well, we brought some 10-year-olds in. Kids, come on. Can you take the sword out of the... No, it's all no, one no, piece of wood. Oh. We're not going to let us have a real sword on oh. set. Oh. Oh. I missed that. Clearly, I was paying attention. <laughs> Well, Kier, thank you so much, and thank you for paying attention. <laughs> if you spend any time here in Japan, you'll quickly see the passion for baseball. People here know that it's an imported game, but there's still a very real feeling that it belongs to them. It starts here. With the crack of a bat, the smell of glove leather, the pride of wearing the same uniform as your teammates. Kids across America and Japan grow up playing and loving the game of baseball. America's pastime has a storied past here in Japan. The evidence is everywhere in the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame. The Hall's president explains that an American teacher first taught his Japanese students the game in 1872. They've been devoted to the game here ever since. Japanese stars have crossed over to the American big leagues, the likes of Nomo, Ichiro and Matsui becoming household names. This month, Shohei Otani starred in the Home Run Derby and was the winning pitcher of the Major League All-Star Game. The flow of players both ways, with Americans playing in the Japanese league. Among them is Brandon Dixon, who spent eight seasons playing in Japan, earning the nickname the Blue-Eyed Samurai. I really didn't know when I went over there how it was going to be. But to me, they've exceeded all expectations. I mean, they, they just blew me away with their hospitality. Dixon is on the roster for Team USA, set to compete in and against his one-time adopted home. Baseball here, he says, is all about tradition. It's 100% from every person all the time. You know, there, there's, no, there's no slacking. And just the way they handle it, it's the way their dads handle it, the way their granddads handle it. With no fans in the stands, Dixon's teammates won't get the same experience in this baseball-crazed nation. Like I witnessed at the Yumiuri Giants game in Tokyo two years ago. It's that kind of passion that turned Canadian transplant Trevor Ruchera into a super fan of the Hanzin Tigers when he moved to Osaka. He now runs an independent English language fan site about the team. This team is the sports team in the Kansai area. Not always the most successful, but definitely the most talked about. And I kind of wanted to be part of that world. Trevor was able to give us a tour of the museum inside Koshien Stadium. Opened in 1924, it's Japan's Fenway Park or Wrigley Field. In fact, this is the poster from the uh, tournament where Babe Ruth came to Koshien Stadium. Babe Ruth even played here during an off-season tour. The game may be steeped in history, 
But the game experience is vibrant and alive. Instead of stretching in the middle of the seventh inning, Tigers fans release colourful balloons. Expectations are high for both the US and Japanese national teams on the baseball diamond these Olympics. Half a world apart, boys and girls will be watching, all taking pride in a game they call their own. Thank you for joining me on some of my unique adventures here in Japan. I hope you were able to learn a little bit more about a place that is not only an ancient treasure, but also a present day marvel. Thank you for watching.